Hey friends, welcome to this brand new part, part 9 of AWS Certified Data Analytics. We are looking at some of the real certification questions. Today, we will look at questions linked with these three topics. Okay. Now, I would strongly encourage you to click the join button and become a cloud ninja. This certification, Certified Data Analytics or mm -hmm. Solution Architect Professional, these are all advanced certifications which will be only available if you pay for the cloud ninja subscription now definitely i would be posting some questions which would be free for people to try to absorb and understand the concepts why should you do this certification because if you do aws cloud practitioner or aws solution architect associate you will gain some respect but if you want to establish your authority on the technology that you understand very well you got to clear this certification this will help you command a lot of respect in your organization this is a difficult certification but as you know with this channel i will be help helping you clearing all your concepts if you have not yet subscribed to this channel please hit the subscribe button this will help you stay tuned to all of the latest contents around certifications especially on cloud let us jump into the questions see there is a sales dashboard and you want to improve the data load time of that dashboard now how what is the data where is it stored is it stored in a database or something so this is how the data is collected they collect the data as csv files and they store it on s3 buckets and then the data is loaded to redshift so finally your dashboard your this is your dashboard it is hitting a database which is redshift it reads the data from redshift and how much data 500 gb per day that is humongous obviously what happens with such kind of data volumes your performance will go low and you will have to improve the performance and that is exactly what the question is asking for let's look into options option a says you will compress the csv files and use an insert statement to ingest the data in redshift so the performance here what is the performance problem the performance problem is not at this dashboard level the performance problem is at the data loading level data loading from where to where from multiple csv files to this database redshift database that is the problem bottleneck okay so always remember you have to give a solution for data loading performance issues so always remember when you have performance issues and you have these many humongous amount of data like 500 gp always remember split the data files split the data files option a is saying you to compress the data file so multiple small small files will become one big file and then you will fire one single insert statement to ingest the data in redshift this will always give you bottlenecks performance issues if anything gets stuck in this process everything else is sequential and everything will be waiting if one process gets stuck that's why this is a wrong option now let us look at other wrong options option c it says i will use kinesis see first of all is there a real-time data requirement my thumb rule always suggests if i see the word real time if I see the word near real time, I will choose Kinesis. If I don't see these two, I will not choose Kinesis. So this is wrong. So D is saying that you load the CSV files in unsorted key order. See, first thing remember in Redshift world, vacuum is a very expensive operation. What does vacuum do? It does a resort of rows and columns. Why? Because it reclaims the space. Suppose you have Redshift clusters and you have deleted or truncated a lot of data. Now you have truncated 500 GB of data. Unless you fire vacuum, the space will not be reclaimed by redshift so you want to reclaim the empty space because 500 gb is now gone you want to reclaim that space you cannot reclaim unless you do a vacuum and vacuum is a very expensive operation okay so the if you want to solve the performance issues the solution cannot be to use vacuum because vacuum first of all it's very expensive operation second you will follow the best practice the best practice says loaded in a sort key manner not unsorted so why will you not follow the best practice that's why d is wrong because it does not adhere to the best practices this leaves us with one option this is my answer like i told you split the file if you want to solve the problem split the files multiple small small files if one file is slow the other file will be loaded in parallel which will the slower file will not be a bottleneck for other files it will all be loading in parallel so what happens with option b is you can bring a degree of parallelism so instead of 
five people doing the work you are bringing 50 or 20 people to do the same work in parallel at the same time so in the same time period you can complete so many tasks so this is a good documentation you can pause this video and read this carefully you can split your load data just like we told that is the best practice when you load compressed data using the copy command from multiple files that data loads in parallel okay so you should always try to split the data you should split your data into smaller files that are equal in size from 1 MB to 1 GB after compression. This ensures optimum parallelism. So this is my final answer. See there is a company and that company is having a data warehouse where on that shift. And what is the size of the data warehouse? It is 500 TB. So you have a data warehouse on that shift and this is of 500 terabytes in size. So it always just like data warehouse it will always receive new data every day and what are data warehouses used for read only queries it may be reports it may be some other queries it's some maybe some mm -hmm. machine learning analytics program firing read only queries see what is the uh, problem here they are saying that some queries are taking longer time to execute the reads the queries are taking longer time to execute why what is the problem see there is a particularly heavy load with no writes for several hours each morning every day in the morning some heavy reads out maybe some people fire queries which are very heavy in nature which are very resource intensive and due to this some queries are queued and they have to wait unless the other query has executed now you want to optimize the query execution and avoid any downtime what is the most cost effective solution so in a nutshell what is happening you have multiple queries which are hogging the resources and the other queries are waiting for these two queries to complete so what will you do you will enable concurrency scaling in the wlm queue so with concurrency scaling, you can support virtually unlimited concurrent users and concurrent queries. This will be making the queries run faster. You will get faster query performance. When you turn the concurrency scaling on, Redshift automatically adds additional cluster capacity to process in case there is an increase in both read and write. So this is the advantage you see. At the moment, Redshift would see that, hey, you know what? These two queries are hogging a lot of resources. It will immediately add more capacity. That is the advantage if you enable concurrency scaling. So this is my answer. I find this apt. See, another thing is it is also making use of WLM. There are certain set of assignment rules for WLM. You can pause this video and read this carefully. This will help you understand how the assignment works. Since I am not doing PhD and you are not doing PhD, I am not going to the depth of explaining the concept of WLM. Now option B, it is saying that boss, you add, you know that every morning you are facing this problem. So at that time, when the, you face the problem, that time you go to the management console and add more nodes during that peak hour. And you set the distribution style to all. So all means it will copy the entire table to each and every node. So you see, it will copy the entire table to each and every node, which is very expensive. See, this problem we use to uh, solve the read issues. Okay, But here we have a read issue, but the problem is with the some of the queries are hogging this space. So first of all, you cannot wait, see, you know each morning, but you don't know exactly what time. Is it 6 a.m.? Is it 10 a.m.? Is it between 6 to 10 a.m.? Is it between 6 to 12 noon? Is it between 3 a.m. to 6 a.m.? What is the time? So you don't know. So what will you do? You will add more nodes when? You will add it from, uh, even, uh, from morning 3 a.m. till up to 12 noon. What will you do? I don't know. So that, that solution is not a very lucrative solution. It will not help you solve the performance. Now, other thing is saying is use elastic resize to quickly add nodes during peak time. Remove the nodes when they are not needed. See, the problem is with elastic resize. Elastic resize takes 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. During the resize operation, the cluster is only available, read only, which is fine for us. Read only is fine, but it will take uh, 10 to 15 minutes. That means every day in the morning for 10 to 15 minutes, you will always have this read issues. The queries will be in the queue at least for 10 to 15 minutes till that elastic resize is happening. This will not work. I have a better solution in the terms of option A, which is concurrent scaling. The fourth, the last one says you use a snapshot restore and resize operation. So when you are and then you switch to a new target cluster. So whenever you face these issues, you will take a snapshot, right? Because you are a stupid person. So you will take a snapshot. The snapshot will take two, three hours. Till that time, the query itself will execute. What advantage you get when you create a snapshot, then restore, then resize. This operation itself will take hours and then you create a new cluster. So how many times you will keep doing it because you are facing this issue every day morning. 
so option d is wrong option d is the most foolish option option so this is my final answer option a now let us look at this question again a redshift data warehouse question man this certification is top heavy on redshift you need to know redshift in and out so in this case again you have a data warehouse which is on redshift and you are having a cluster with three dense storage nodes you have three nodes these are dense storage nodes okay now due to the recent business acquisition the company needs to load additional four terabytes so this company for example just like now tesla tesla acquired twitter when it acquired twitter it has additional data that it has to integrate so there is additional four terabytes of user data that they need to now put into redshift the engineering team will combine all the data and apply complex calculations that require io intensive resources and this my friend this is the the keyword they want us to solve what problem they want us to solve io intensive resources problem they are not asking you to solve the storage problem only they are asking you to solve the io intensive resource problems the company needs to adjust the cluster's capacity to support the change so you want to now adjust the redshift cluster capacity what will you do you have multiple options what will you do will you resize the cluster using elastic resize classic resize first of all you have to decide what will you use elastic resize classic resize see the problem with elastic resize is it does not sort tables or it will not reclaim the space you will have to run the vacuum statements elastic resize is available only for redshift clusters that is what our question requires and elastic resize requires less time to complete than compared to classic resize and that is what we require right so we want to resize and use an option which takes less amount amount of time see we should use classic resize only only if the elastic resize does not have those configurations you see this line choose this option when you are resizing to a configuration that isn't available through elastic resize so elastic resize should be our first method so now we have established that we have to use elastic resize and hence any option which has classic resize i will mark it crossed i will cross it and this is so i have now i have to choose between option a and option c because both use elastic resize now between dense compute and dense storage i have to make a choice between dense compute and dense storage what will i do see i know i have marked it in purple what i need to address my problem is io intensive resources that means i have to add more compute and not more storage so i will choose a and i will not choose c so c is wrong a is correct because i need to add more compute so that i can apply complex calculations and help with the resource intensive operations see now you might say hey what happened to this storage requirement see you already have three dense storage nodes that is good enough for for us to start with and but storage nodes will not help you with computes you need very strong compute power that's why i would choose option a over option c this is my final answer so friends please hit the subscribe button if you have not already subscribed this will help you stay tuned to the latest real certification questions on cloud do not forget to click the join button and become cloud ninja because this data analytics is a advanced certification which will be available in cloud ninja always i will be also posting some of the free content but if you want a comprehensive list of all the questions and concepts becoming a cloud ninja would help you cloud kernel is for basic and intermediate certifications and cloud ninja is for advanced certifications if you have not yet subscribed please hit the subscribe button folks see you in the next part